Okay, so here we are back. This is season six, episode two. Uh, and as we, it's a to be to be continued because we left the last episode kind of at a cliffhanger. Right after a fight, Gucci had just walked over and 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 uh, put his hand on on Korbog and did a nice cure cure wounds to Korbog, and that's where we left it. So we'll jump right into the role playing and go right ahead, Gucci. I think you're about to you're about to say something. So. <laughs> Ah, your your face looks familiar, little one. Have we met before? I don't think Who so. Who me? Yes, oh, him. Uh, He's a little oh, one. You are you you are far from little, my dear. Um, yes, you. Yes. Carbox says who me? <laughs> who me? I've never seen anything like you. <laughs> and Is you, you like, think of Rick's cousin? <laughs> Goldie, give me a history check. Okay. This should be good. Oh, 21. Gucci specifically doesn't look familiar, but the name sounds familiar. And he has some qualities of some tieflings, you know, from Riverbreak. Oh, Goldie's like looking up at Gucci, like, like with what I'd wonder, because she, she recognizes like that he has finery on and, you know, she's noble. So she has, you know, she's very, very into clothing and fabrics and she can see that He's dressed from head to toe and like, and his jewel on his finger. She's like, you don't look familiar, but you look like people that I know. You're beautiful. Oh. I'm so used to being around these two. Well, I do love a good compliment. Thank you so much. Where did you come from? Oh, that's a long story, dear. Actually, I've well, I know it's going to sound a little startling, and I promise I'm no foe. I've been following you, well, your group, for quite a while. Um, particularly because of the gentleman over there. And then I'm going to be pointing in the direction of uh, Bryn, who I don't Bryn? know where he is right now. Like, if he's, like, still far away. <laughs> do, 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 you mean, do you mean Bryn? Yes, darling. Yes. Um, I believe that, that is that confirmed that that's his, his name. Brent. Yes. The really sort of uh, kind of scary looking orc, but he's really a teddy bear, is Korbog. And the. Um, oh, oh, we've the met. I'm sure we'll have more time to get further acquainted. Korbog's, but uh, yes, yes. Korbog stands up and says, Now's the part where you get to why. You've been following us. Oh, 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 oh! I know. I, I that I was trying to let you know that there's no reason to, uh, you know, be startled. Um, the reason why I, I think I, I would need your friend to uh, join the conversation, especially since he was the one that I'm truly after. Ow. Not in that way. Not in that oh. way. Oh. What? In what way, then? I believe that your friend should be in in this conversation. And so uh, basically um, I'm going to uh, Gucci, you see Gucci kind of turn around from, from the two of them and does a little like little wave to try to get Bren's attention. <laughs> I'll pull the arm blade out of this lady's neck that I just stabbed <laughs> it into. I I'm not sure who you are or why you're after me. I, I do appreciate you having my back there and all of our back. Well, um, mm -hmm. there's a reason why I was following, of course, and, and looking for you um, in particular. I made a promise to someone very important to me, not to mention um, you might be familiar with Enthel, mm -hmm. the resistance. Now, Bryn, that ring about? Bryn, this makes no sense to you at all. You have no idea what she's talking, what he's talking about. Nothing. It's blank. <sighs> you do. Oh, actually, Nothing. Bryn, give me a perception check. <laughs> do we see confusion cross <laughs> <laughs> well, That, that Bryn, would be this just normal. I mean, Bryn's always Bryn's always confused about something. <laughs> You're like saying, what? <laughs> "Who that? What uh, you? What you call it?" <laughs> I, uh, Ten, but. Okay. So, um, so you will, uh, yeah, now you can notice, uh, you'll, you'll notice in uh, roughly the same spot, uh, Gucci has a, uh, has a, uh, like a little, um, emblem on as well, but it's not 
Lady Grundlebach. It's something else. So, you're part. What do you mean you're part of a resistance? Oh, oh, darling, are you are you not aware of the current situation? No, oh, I, I, from the, the look the of situation, where? Or, what? Ah, uh, okay. Let me. We just got out of a hell mouth. I, what, what are uh, we talking about? Yes, <laughs> I, I know. Right. We just, I just got my ass kicked by some Lady Grundelock thugs that I, I haven't seen in decades. What? See, that's that's the key, darling. Um, you're the key, uh, Lady Gr- Grindelock. She is. Um, Grundle. Let's say Grundle. Grundelock. Grundle. Yes. Grundle. She's a wench. I don't really care about yeah, what I call wench. her. Um, but uh, yes, um, well, at least we agree upon that. Um, but yes, um, she's gotten a little greedy. Uh, how long has it been since you've been with her? Because apparently I've heard through the grapevine that you are connected to her in some way. Hence why I was told to try to bring you back. You came very far to bring him back. It, it, it's been over 30 yes, years. Yes. I, well, I mean, uh, we, we, we walked through time. I, God, I don't know. Poor Bob. What did we lose? 15 years at one time? I, yes. I don't know. 40 something years, maybe. Well, a lot has changed. Uh, that's for sure. Lady Grundelock has been gaining immense power, you see. But her power, she wants more. So she's uh, looking to expand, uh, shall we say, to the surface. There has been a major rift between, well, amongst the drow. I uh, am associated with the intel, the resistance. We fight against Lady Grundelock's uh, forces, if you will. She's continued to gain more and more power, but it's never enough for her. No matter how many lives she has to take, it doesn't seem to be enough for her or her men. It started with the assassins, which I'm assuming from those blades, that's what you may have been? Uh, yeah. More, uh, more, more or less. I mean, she did try to turn me into an assassin. I kind of failed mm. out, if you will. Well, uh, that's a good thing for you. Uh, it gradually became more skirmishes, and just now it's broken out in a full-out war. She's been able to convince other houses to join with her, so hence her power continues to grow day by day. Now, I was told by someone dear to me, who I mentioned, well, not formally, Karenzen Vond. Does that name ring a bell at all? No, I'm assuming not. Jeez. Uh, He mentioned your name, but I don't know why you are the key to uh, taking down her forces. Is it some type of knowledge that you hold? So you can give me, uh, Gucci, you can give me a, um, just give me a history check is fine. Okay. Alrighty. And then that is, let's see. Come on. Let me get to my sheet. Okay. So that's a 15. So from the conversations you had when they told you, you, you kind of gleaned information from it that, um, there has been tabs that have been kept on Bryn. Uh, so the drow know they, they, they know what kind of stuff he's been through and they know that he's a, that him and his group are a very powerful adventuring group. And so that's why he's become important. Also the information, like, like you know, he knows Lady Grundelock and, and that kind of stuff. So he is privy to some stuff. Um, about her as well. Hmm. I mean, they've been uh, keeping track of your whereabouts and what you've been up to with your party here. And um, 
I mean, they say that you're very, very useful, even though I, I, I hate to say it, but uh, you went down quite a few times. So we'll have to work on a few of those skills if you wish are to join the resistance. That's for sure. But the choice is up to you if you uh, are concerned at all as, as far as what's going on in the Underdark currently with your people. I left the, I left the Underdark as, a, as an individual. And as you can see, I've met some pretty good friends up here. Oh, yes. And some handsome ones of that. And then basically like Gucci winks at Korbog. Yeah. So um, I guess that um, sums up why I was obviously following behind. I, I have no interest in the politics of, of Lady Grendelock in in the city. I, I you grew don't up care in that, that there's other drow that are suffering, who will continue to suffer, innocent lives lost. That doesn't concern you one bit. What will happen if your faction wins? Well, obviously, if we uh, can stop her forces, it means no lives are lost anymore. People are safe. You can go about the Underdark however they please. But um, listen, quite frankly, Bryn, Bryn, was it? Yes, I'm pretty it's sure. Bryn. Yes, it's Bryn. yes. Um, well, of course, of course, I was told to get the description. Anyway, um, I'm not really concerned with politics either. I mean, I like to have a good time and and be more carefree and, and do what I please. I, But I made a promise to Quran. And now, my, you know, eh, there's more at stake here. So that's why I'm... I am now concerned. I've been with these people for a while and it would be a shame to see more of their lives and their blood spilled. So Goldie, give me a history check and Corby, give me a history check with advantage. Oh, I got this. 24. Okay. But um, Goldie's going to run over and like grab Bryn's arm and look up at Gucci and say, but did you come to take him away right now? Oh, no, no, dear, dear. I'm, I'm simply um, just on a mission, a mission uh, uh, of goodwill. Let's just put it at that. Um, hey. To try to convince, if I can, Mr. Britton, to at least come back and maybe give the intel a uh, fighting chance. So, Corby, what did you get on your history check? 11. Okay. So, Goldie, so Goldie, you know, so unlike other worlds where drow are these hateful, terrible, you know, evil, drow, evil elf kind of things, the drow in this world are actually not like that. So, the drow in this world are actually, they, they do live in the Underdark, but what they do is they generally uh, help people get from place to place. So, the Underdark is a, is a, massive layer of tunnels and stuff underneath the underneath the planet and they can even get you across like um they can get you across the ocean they could go underneath the ocean and they're they're more like uh like what people normally imagine like like the wood elves like they kind of live in the underdark and they help people okay. get from place to place faster um so they're normally like these this this race of creatures that are not they're not like the drow of, of, of other places. However, um, what's raining in your head now is it sounds like there is a faction which is now turning into the typical drow that everybody who watches D&D and plays D&D knows drow to be these evil monsters. Um, there seems to be this faction rising up that is like is like that. So there are a lot of good, innocent drow elves that live underneath the, uh, underneath the crust and are perfectly nice people. And Goldie knows so, it because you've probably know. yeah yeah you've probably heard about it or you know you rolled good enough that you've heard stories about it or you know somewhere somebody pro you know may have like you've you've basically probably heard a story from the cross blades or something when you were there okay. you know oh yeah I used to hide and listen used to hide and listen <laughs> and everything so cool so um these Gucci. these good drow you're speaking of yes I, and and these the drow that I'm 
I, I've never known a drought in my entire life that was anything but cruel. <laughs> I used to my, have the same assumption until I gave them an opportunity to show a different side. So, I mean, my, my entire life was spent within the compound of a lady. I, I wasn't let out and until I escaped, it was, my whole life was within, within her compound, within her grounds. But see, that is the information that we need to have an advantage by knowing about the inside. We can, we can't get, our forces can't get close enough. I don't know that your forces want to get in there. It's a pretty, yeah. The, you, you think they think these four that we were fighting here were were difficult? That's uh, that's just the taste. Well, it seems as if they believe in you. So, because I have grown to trust them, I do as well. It's kind of a big deal, Bryn. It sounds like, but. You wouldn't have to go alone, right, Korbog? We wouldn't let him go back and deal with this alone, right? Oh, I would hope you would come along. And then go, uh, Gucci's going to go over, kind of like over near Korbog and kind of place a hand on uh, on his bicep where <laughs> to try to like hold You got to reach up though, because it's pretty <laughs> yeah. tall. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I'm, how tall are you? Because like, Gucci's, Gucci's 5'10". How tall? He's only 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> it's a cute little height difference. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, kind of giving the bicep a little squeeze. And, mm. and then that's that then basically just walks over to, to Goldie um, and um, kind of squats down. You can come along too, dear. You might. I mean, I saw a, a little bit of what you can do. Prove useful as well. Really? <laughs> she reaches out and just sort of touches like Gucci's um this the silk on his collar. It's beautiful. Thank you. You know, you always have to stay on top of the fashions. I agree. We're gonna get along really well. So can we go, guys? Can we go? Bryn, why do you look like you don't wanna you look sort of skeptical? Goldie, this, this is a horrid place. I, I, oh my god. I mean, there's some parts of it that are, well, I mean, beautiful is a strong no, word uh, for it, but I, it has its charm. I'm sure the Underdark can be a beautiful place, but I mean, we're not talking never about going to the Underdark. We're talking about going to Lady Grendelach's compound and. Well, of course, not right away, darling. It's. You know that we strategize, we we plan. I mean, I you know my skill, I hide in the shadows. I mean, you guys didn't see me, so you know that I'm good at what I do. But uh, yes, um, you know we have ways of uh, avoiding um, unnecessary conflict when needed. How's the food down there? <laughs> uh, I it leaves some to be desired, but you know it's a, I have. Particular tastes. It's been a while, actually. I, you know, I actually, I've, I haven't been to the surface in quite some time. I could go for a really nice meal. Yes. Uh, but anyway, um, back to the subject matter. You don't have to uh, say yes now. Um, if you if you are not quite sure about me, even though I promise I'm trustworthy. I mean, most of the time. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, if you need to get to know me better, we can go to a tavern. Yeah, yeah, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what is it? You you want us to, wait a minute, we just met you. You, you uh, literally, I, yes, I just um, got my I'm ass sorry. kicked by, uh, uh, that's why sit I down said, for a minute? Yes, <laughs> that's why I said, maybe if we go to a tavern, a nice restaurant, I mean, I know I'm, I'm starving as well and quite parched. Um, I could go for some wine, actually. Uh, so, you know, we can t discuss things further, um, if you don't mind, of course, that I travel with you. 
the closest wine is about a day's travel that way. Oh, that's fine. So then we can talk on the way. That's fantastic. And Gucci, you know, so you you actually know an exact path to get to River Break from here. Um, you think you could get there in in about three quarters of a day. You you get you you could get him there east faster. You you know the terrain. But if um, you know you're a little impatient because you want to know a little bit more details about what I just explained. Uh, I do know a faster way. It'll probably take about uh, three-fourths of that time. That still means camping between here and there, right? Yeah. Yeah, we we, we need to rest. We need to sleep. Mm -hmm. So can we start making a fire and sure. relaxing yeah, yeah. a little bit? And, yep. Um, I would like to take a minute and check out the drow a little closer. Okay. The dead body? Um, the dead drow? All of them. So they all have the insignia yeah, from Lady Grundelag on them. Trolling them for is loot? It, I said, well, well is, loot. yeah, is the insignia, is it a, is it a sewn on patch? Is it a pin? It's a pin. It's a little metal. Uh, it's a little mithril pin. Okay. On, on the three? On the four. There's, even, there's one on the drider as well. There's one on the drider? Yep. Okay, so... I definitely want to take all four of those pins. So the the three drow um, have it like th as like a, as like a cloak clasp, right, holding their cloak on. The drider, it's actually just pinned right through his skin. But each of these, if you were to like sell these myth these uh, um, metals for their for their just just their value, they're probably like fifty gold pieces a piece. Yeah, I'm not looking for them for that. I want to pocket those. Is anybody else checking them out, too? Mm, I'm going to leave it up to the guys. Okay. Since I'm one of the guys, I guess I'll do my part. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to... Not very obviously, so if you'd like me to make a sleight of hand check. I want to I wanna look for modifications. I want to look to see if anybody else has had enhancements done none so not any lady grundelock no nasty shop of horrors crap nope okay so um, with that Bryn, you do know gucci did say there were two other houses working with lady a grundelock and at the time there were only three major houses in the city of river break well, no, <laughs> so, you know, no no you know that or were, sorry, in the in the sorry in the underdark. No, no, there. you know you know that there were nine houses, but she was her house was in the top three. Okay. Uh, Gucci's going to try to um, go through um, if there's any types of, like anywhere where if, like if there were, they had satchels or um, pockets or anything where they could hide um, intel or any type of um, writing like notes or like how they knew about Bryn mm -hmm. because that's you know that's why she's looking for Bryn is something that would uh be of interest to Gucci. So you uh while you're kind of scroll while you're kind of um fumbling through like the um the spellcasters stuff you know the spellcaster had like a little crystal ball on him um and had mm -hmm. some more of the components that maybe he was scrying on Bryn mm -hmm. to know where to know where he was. And Korbog, um, if you're, are you searching the the guy? <laughs> Which guy? The one yes. that, or the, well, the first one with the great sword that went over and really put a whooping on Bryn. Um, so if you're searching him, you do find a few things on him that seem to be, he's got a great sword, which appears to be something special. He has the, has a pair of boots. Um, he's wearing some elven chain mail. Uh, and he has that ring that, that, that glowed when Gucci saw it flash. And the only other special thing besides the, the stuff is the, is the woman in the plate mail has one of those swords uh, with the rainbow metal made of the rainbow metal. And then what is that um, called again? That is Dioranio. 
Uranio. I may I mainly ask because I needed to know how to pronounce it. Yep. Or yeah, Uranio. <laughs> Uranio. Got it. Bryn. Can I see every uh, can you're, you're see everyone enough. like pocketing all this stuff? And she starts to feel like everyone's finding tre- treasures and things. And can she like tiptoe over to the dead dryden and see if there's anything <laughs> on it? <laughs> You don't see anything on the dryer. I don't think anybody's really, the only person we pickpocketed any right now is Bryn, is taking the medals. And he's not being very stealthy about it, so he's just kind of taking the medals, like the little badges, and he's like, sticks them in his pocket. Um, I don't like desecrating the dead, but I guess I better learn. Goldie, they would have desecrated us even worse. Darling, you don't have to feel bad. They are not good people. So, are you, good are riddance. You I use the great sword to cut off everyone's head. Then I put those heads Corbog. in the bag. And I tie up the bag and I keep it. Okay. And as I'm doing that, I say to Bryn, you say you don't want to be involved in the politics. What about just cold vengeance for what you've suffered? Is this a message from the gods that we should be their instruments to deliver justice? Because I'm willing to do that. I've been doing it for decades. And Korbag, as you're swinging this sword and you're chopping the heads off these drow, um, this great sword seems very well balanced. Uh, it does slice right through their skin quite easily. It's very sharp. Gucci, are, are there really good people there in are. the Underdark? Are, are there good people we're saving? I mean, Let's it's one thing for us to go on a mission and just... I, I'm, I, I I would love to take out Lady Grindelock, but I, I'm not going to endanger my friends for for the sake of taking out someone that's evil. I mean, but if they're starting to come to the surface, I don't know. There are. Let's just say that the person I lost, they saved me. And I couldn't do the same for them. So that vengeance that your beautiful friend is mentioning, I want that as well. But also too, if it leads to the freedom of people who don't deserve to live the way that they have, if that makes sense. You can endanger me without remorse. Hmm. Sure, I could do that <clears throat> in other ways as well. Anyway, um. Hmm. Kit. Does it seem like she, what she's saying is truthful? Part. I'm, what, what, what Iguchi's saying? Yeah, I'm having a really hard time believing. Give me an insight check. Any of this? <laughs> Give me an yeah. insight check. Um, come on! No. <laughs> Minus one seven. He seems to be. Com- <laughs> he seems to be completely truthful. Everything's every, every word out of his mouth seems to ring seems to ring true. I mean, you did know when you were in the underdark. I mean, yes, you grew up in this this very very oppressive, very awful place. But you do. But you did know that there were other people in the city. You know, un- just like everything else, like there were common drow that were going about their business and just trying to make a living and just trying to live. Um, that not everybody was a cold, heartless killer. Everybody in your area was a cold, heart, cold, heartless killer. Hmm. Well, and it, I did have that one friend that that brought me back the wolf toy. Well, I mean. So, so Gucci, I, I mean, can this be like the next day and we're walking towards? Sure, the yeah, yep. So you guys can, so you guys can sleep that that, that night. Okay. You can feed long Goldie rest. the seven times during the night. You have to feed Goldie, and then that's long rest. Of the city. <laughs> yes, and you guys long rest, so you can oh, hit long rest on D and D Beyond to. Uh... No, no art fuckery throughout the night. Are no, you serious? No, like, no we just long rest. Just get a long rest. Just get a long All rest. Right. Do we also gain a level? 
Yes, you actually gain gain a level as well. Wait, what? Oh God, okay. So you can all you can all level to twelve. Do, 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 Levels for everybody. Oh, Woo! Oh, sweet. <laughs> Arras, ten your night, um, and you are traveling to River Break, and then you can continue to have some conversation if you'd like while you're on your way to River Break. Okay, so the, so it's three day trip, two day trip walking. All right, well now you only got about a three about three quarters of a day left because Gucci, as as you notice as the time goes 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 through, Gucci is leading you through. Not, not, there's no path, but he's leading you through. He's like, like very, like if there's like difficult terrain everywhere he knows the one path that's not difficult to walk through to get through the forest um and move your way through with relative ease therefore speeding up your travel perfect okay and uh so goldie's gonna look at gucci and, and just sort of catch up to him and say so do you travel alone a lot i travel alone i don't often sleep alone but that's a whole nother conversation dear I don't even know if you're old enough to discuss such topics. I am. I'm actually 16 years old. I just look little. Oh. Well, I, I don't want to uh, tell the stories just quite yet. Maybe a, a few years from now. <laughs> I'd love to hear them. <laughs> um, so I'm sure. How did you find us? How long were you following us, actually? It's been a day or so since um, Northridge Village. I'm just amazed that you found us. Spending time there. Well, that's what I do best. You like a tracker? People. You like a tracker? It's one of my many gifts. I've heard of trackers. I've never met one before. Yes, I always get my man, a woman. Yes. So, Gucci, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more about your... You said the resistance is what they're called? The Enthel, yes. They uh, got tired of Grundelok's forces and her taking control to the point where they couldn't live freely anymore, so they fought back. And um, more and more banded together, and even though the numbers are not as great as Lady Grundelok's, it's growing. So you know Inthel is merely the drow word for rebel. Okay. Tell me, uh, so you said the, the lady has teamed up with two other houses. Correct. Who, who else is she involved with at this point? Hmm. Well, it appears um, she joined with Lord... Blabberin, and Lady Diorin. So those both mm. those both ring true to you, Bryn. Just know that they decided to join with her in the fight against the other six houses. And surprisingly, uh, they're succeeding. <clears throat> so, y you said earlier that that Lady Grundelok was interested in, in me in particular. Is she interested in me as a fighter or is there is there another reason that she's after me? She can't be interested in you as a fighter. They were cutting you into tiny pieces. I think it's because Bob, of you. I don't think that's very helpful right now. I am not very wise. Leave me alone. <laughs> I, I believe... It's the truth. But... The truth is always helpful. <laughs> As the handsome one says, I believe that it has to do more with um, the fact that you know a lot, too much. I'm sure she wants you silenced. And also, too, you are, I'm, I, I'm going to, even though it, things could have went a little better in the last battle, um, I am going to assume that, uh, obviously, if she had you uh, in her grasp, you are a capable fighter. And Gucci, you can give me a history check. They did focus fire on him. They did. 
Yeah, the Gucci's just throwing shade. Like that's just Gucci being. I get now. She's like, I'm gonna think could have gone better, and then. <laughs> and throws it yeah. back. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, and I, where's that ring? Level? Can yeah. I that yeah. ring go yeah. back? Um, yeah. So, um, what so was that role for? you got it. So, um, so you know, well, you 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 speculate. Um, uh, Lady Grendelock's probably a little bit pissed off too that he got away. So it's mm-hmm. probably a little bit of. You know, someone took one of her toys away from her, and she's a little bit pissed mm-hmm. about it. <clears throat> yeah. Not to mention, she's not one who likes to lose, especially she her playthings. St- she sounds <laughs> stupid to me. Why attract, the atten- why attract the attention of somebody who is a threat to you when they haven't raised a finger against you since they've been gone? <laughs> Again, wise words. I can't, uh, I, I mean, I personally can't get inside of her brain and I don't know what she, exactly she has planned next, but I do know, we do know that now it's not just a matter of her taking over the Underdark. If she has her sights set on the surface, then the war is now everyone's problem, not just the drow. While you were resting, I assume you were checking out the items? Yep. So, Korbog, you know that that great sword is a great sword of sharpness. Great sword of sharpness. Which makes sense now that you think back about it. When I rolled the natural twenty against Bryn, and he's got Bryn, you still have a slice in that metal part of your arm where that sword almost cut through your arm. Um, only because I didn't roll the twenty to back it up, or else I would have cut through your arm. But I, I only got one. Uh, the boots are a boots of striding and springing. Ooh. The elven chain is, in fact, elven elven chain, um, and the ring is a ring of spell turning. And Goldie, I believe you can probably wear the elven chain, other than it's a little big on you, but it is magical. Oh, so <gasps> shrink down. Thank you. It's at that middle. <laughs> Assuming that they want to give you the armor. I mean, I, I'm just saying. I guess. Yeah, just just one one more question, Gucci, about about what's going on now. You can ask me all the questions. I'm an open book. And yeah. this one's particularly difficult. Is she? Uh, are, are the rebels aware of what Lady Grindelock uh, is is doing to people within her compound? W- way beyond. Way beyond abuse, uh, and I'll 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 take off one of my gloves and roll up my sleeve and show her him. Sorry, it's okay. I'm horrible I'm at that. It's really pretty, Gucci. You know, yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you don't know like generally like like mm-hmm. extreme specifics, but you do know that she does weird experiments on her people, and she's just mm-hmm. this vicious, evil person who is just terrible atrocities of all sorts of things that that she's done um so the fact that he has like this mechanical arm is not surprising to you um you might not have known that previously that she's done that to, uh, to other people but you know you're like well that's just another terrible thing that she's done you know we're aware that uh the lens she'll go to to inflict pain and evil it runs deep so we're aware that she is a monster I mean that's that's intel we should definitely uh, probably flesh out before we go in if if she was this advanced back then and you know was able to take a, a draw like me and I mean, the only reason I'm at any good at fighting now is is not because of Lady Grendelock and what she did to me back then, but you know, it, it took time. And if if she's advanced this technique, she could have some very serious capabilities within her house that that she hasn't unleashed yet. And I I, I kind of kind of think that might be 
one of the reasons that she's after me in particular. I'm sure it is, darling. I have no doubt that you are one of the major threats to her currently. That's why so it's so important to find those that have the knowledge that you possess and who are capable so we can hopefully stand a better chance. And Bryn, just a quick question. Did you take the other sword when you left? The rainbow metal sword? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we took everything of value. So the rainbow great sword, um, it, it does not even feel comfortable in your hands. Like you even just pick it up, any contact with that metal just doesn't feel comfortable to you. So, so the fact that she was wielding a that she was wielding the great sword in the first place and walking around with it, like touching the metal, just says something, right? Like you, you feel very uncomfortable holding it, and she didn't seem phased by it by it at all. So, I mean, we've we've collected some of that raw ore. Correct. You have items being made of it back in town, back in Riverbridge. Yeah. And and when we when we collected the ore itself, it didn't have that feeling at all to it. The ore didn't have that feeling to it. Not that okay. you can remember. But you may but you also, now that you think back on it, you may not have touched it skin to skin either. Well, I can't do that now. I'm not putting it on my right. cheek. Right. <laughs> okay. Um does Gucci see that um Bryn is trying to look at that that particular weapon and like kind of trying to examine it. Yeah. At all or no? Sure. Um, I'm Gucci's going to go up and um, kind of place a hand on um, over Bryn's hand that's holding the weapon. Um, I wouldn't do that if I were you. This um, the particular weapons that she possesses and her forces. Let's just say. It's it's designed to eliminate the problem. That translates to it's very fatal for your health. Yeah, so basically, mechanically speaking, they are basically Bane weapons versus Drow. So any Drow that's hit takes an, extra, takes an additional 2 die 6 damage with these weapons. Does that include the sh Sword of Sharpness or just that? No, just the, just the Rainbow Sword. Um... And also, so you know, too, because you guys had the, the, the Duragar had been mining this ore previously. So you know it has some sort of a connection to the Shadowfell as well. So from creatures creatures from the Shadowfell and Drow, are, it's, a, it's a Bane weapon against both. Wow. Which is, why, which is why when it hit you, Bryn, it did, more, it did more damage than it was doing to everybody else. That makes sense. Is is this something that you can yield or wield against? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, would, I don't even want to carry this thing. Well, I have similar feelings, but that's because of the fact that this one of these weapons took the life of Quran, my love. So I don't even want to look at this thing. However, it is useful, so we should not throw it away. Why don't uh, Oh, I mean, Goldie, I, I, I'm not sure that she... Is she capable of wielding anything I'll that's taller it. than her? <laughs> what do you mean, no? She's I really want to see I Goldie try and wield it, though. It'd be great. I'm, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're quite strong, I'm sure. And you have... I am. Might, In other ways, but, Switchy. Yes. I can um, but I believe that... Um, Korbog, dear. You might enjoy <laughs> this weapon. Korbog. <laughs> Me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So Gucci will take it from Bryn to, in order to try to protect Bryn from like no, obviously I don't, I don't like, want anything feeling sick. Um and um and Gucci will hand it over to Korbog, but also to like lingering fingers over the hand as as <laughs> <laughs> he uh moves away pretty fresh aren't you <laughs> i've been called many things that's a new one Corbog, these boots are probably pretty useful for you what do they do 
Gives you a, they give you a movement of 30, I think it is, no matter what. Um, and you can jump three times the normal distance. <laughs> but but oh. you also aren't encumbered. Oh. Wearing heavy armor. Heavy heavy armor. Well, so not... it's either somebody with heavy armor or anybody that wants to jump triple the height. What is the, What are the boots called? Boots of striding and springing. Oh, okay. Oh, and oh, one other item you may have wanted to take. You may have wanted to take the girl's plate, uh, plate of male armor. That's not a cheap item. Okay. Yeah, we oh. would have taken anything we can. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, none of you can wear it. It's specifically yeah. designed for an elven female body, which none of you are, but uh, but plate mail is quite expensive. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can fart around with who gets what after, yeah. but yep. um, mm -hmm. let me get back to River Break. Unless we can bump into something on the way back, but Gucci seems to really know their way around these abandoned pathways. So maybe we won't bump into anything weird, Gucci? Anything? Not when you're with me. Not to fear. And so you guys just do refresh from many seasons ago, right? We're in season six right now. The ore mm -hmm. was season one. I went back and looked. It was season one you guys dealt with that. So that was a long Ooh. time ago. Wow. So that was like a year ago from real time, year, 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 a year ago. Uh, so you guys actually, uh, Muvera, had you guys go to Kettle Blacksmith uh, and bring this ore okay. to him and have him create some items. So you know he was fashioning a shovel some daggers and some arrows out of the Ooh. out of okay. the um out of the out of the or, out of the orinium perfect so just a refresher okay. for when you get back to river break okay and you know he was in the toil oh which actually Bryn, do you want to bring up the map do you want to bring up the map actually quick quickly yeah, so he the last time we saw him, he was in Crossblades, right? Correct, he was. But um, so uh, Gucci, so that you know too. So here is where the toil is. Okay. Uh, the toil is where like all the crafters and stuff live. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine like you know how medieval towns and cities grew up, you like they kind of started in one spot and they got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This may have mm -hmm. been like the original town center that was kind of like you know, where the crafters and small houses and that sort of stuff. And then as it grew, it just kind of expanded out. Um, so that's the toil. And you know that here's the, the the hollow, which is, you know, the center of the town base, basically. Um, but so you know, the toil is uh, is up here and that's where uh, Kettle Blacksmith. I, I say we start back at the crossblades and, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of condition the city's in at this point. It's been... What a couple months are since we've been there? Yeah, about that. I mean, at the very least, we can go back to the crossblades and get drink. something good to eat. Yeah, sounds great. Drink. That sounds we, we still have an open tab. Oh, it's quite nice. Don't Gucci. say. <laughs> now, do they happen to have dragon crush wine? They do. Oh. Yes. Music to my ears. Well, let's make haste. You can go back to big head mode if you want. Bad. <laughs> I don't like the big head mode. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, so you okay. guys can travel. You guys can continue traveling through the forest. And again, Gucci's masterfully mm -hmm. taking you through. Um, you know, at one point you think you, you maybe hear something off in the woods and Gucci's just like, nope, that's not the right way anyway. And kind of leads you a different way. Um, and after, mm -hmm. like, like he said, after about three quarters of a day, so, you know, after mm -hmm. about, you know, like seven hours of travel or so you come to the Northern, uh, part of river break, uh, and to the gate, uh, that's actually right at the toil. Actually, I should have had you keep the, keep the, keep the map up. What a dummy. <laughs> yep. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. So you get to this to get right right up here. Um, you come past the little village here. You know that. Um, so for those that don't that don't know, so and you will have passed it actually um, on the river coming down uh, into into River Break. Uh, there is a logging village 
uh, that's that's about um, a few hours up up the up river from from river break and they're they're doing their thing they're logging away and um so those of you that have been in river break for any period of time you know that what they do is they they log the heartwood so the heartwood is this tree uh that has a special growth pattern so when you cut it it looks like it has a heart in the center of it the way the tree grows um so young heartwood trees actually have this heart-like shape as they get older they become they, they become round but they have a heart-like shape when they're when they're younger. So they chop these trees down and they drop them in the river. The river flo- that they float down the river, and up here there's another little village where they pull the logs and stuff out of the river before they go over the waterfall and they start, you know, like processing the wood just just north of River Break. Um, okay. And, and you guys can come in right up here through this part right here where this where this is and there's like there's like a gate there that you can cross into the city cool. is anybody guarding the gate at this point there are guards there there are in fact and you see uh they are the barbarians they're wearing the purple leather armor with the owl bear cloaks um and they are in fact at the at the gate when you guys get to it And we haven't been here in a long time, right? It's we haven't been, been here. Since it's been a couple months. Yeah, it's been a long time. The gate open. The, the gate's open. Then I walk in like I own the place. Okay. They stand there. They don't seem to. They kind of look you up and down quickly as you guys are like getting getting closer. And as Corbog just strides right through, they they don't say a word. They let him stride on through. Yeah. Gucci I'll, I'll throw uh, also a, goes through. I'll, I'll throw up a rude hand signal. <laughs> Gucci wow. is more like, hello, and <laughs> winking as like, as he's passing through. I, I, well, that that means that Korbach does say something. He says, "Those people are those men aren't worth your time," and he says it loud enough so they can hear you. Hear. Let's too. see. Oh, darling, are you jealous? Don't worry, you are. Yeah, between my hand signal and <laughs> Korbog's comment, they should have that role with advantage. No, what I mean is, oh. if you had no other choices, those aren't valid choices. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's okay to admit that you're just a little jealous. Sure. We'll say we'll say that I'm a little jealous. <laughs> so now, um, Korbog, give me a uh, give me a history check. I'm not good at history. You know this, right? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's still fun to make you roll it. You could get a 20. Six. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. So Keep on going. Pur- purple cloaks and owlbears, though, that was part of the group of lazy pricks who just hid in their little fortress during the insurgence of the city, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. yeah. These, these guys have proven nothing but worthless the entire time we've been in this city. Or worse. Yeah. yeah. So now yeah, for exactly. for um for Gucci and Goldie, um, yeah, you guys know because you were in the city pre everything happening. Uh, you guys know that the that the barbarians, I mean they they weren't necessarily bad people, with the exception of as Goldie met the ones in the hive are definitely corrupted. But the ones Ooh. that you found, the ones that you maybe had met, like in the birthright or something like 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 that, as you were living in the birthright, they were perfectly nice people. There, there was nothing corrupt or wrong. You know, there were just like anything else, right? There was good and bad of everything. So you, you've met mm-hmm. plenty of these barbarians that were perfectly kind, nice uh, people. Um, mm-hmm. It still rings kind of weird to you, Goldie, that they weren't helping the city. But, um, but I mean, you don't, you don't get the feeling that all the, all of the barbarians were these horrible people. Um, now, would Gucci have known about the situation where it's like they didn't assist with? what happened to the city you probably don't know that but you know that the city was overrun by these geist creatures at one point and there was all this problem happening uh you probably don't have enough um um recent enough intel that would tell you that part of it got it Mm, okay I just wanted to make it clear because you guys happen mm-hmm. to only deal really with the barbarians in the hive, and they are definitely the corrupt, bad barbarians. And you, but does but you three are the, that's those are the only people you guys really dealt with were those. So I wanted to just make sure that it was. We went into their fortress. The commander was just as worthless as the ones. Oh, he's an asshole. Yeah, yeah, he he's an yeah. asshole. So that they don't they don't do anything. No, the, no, the, no. They let you go through. They don't say a word. See. 
the situation hasn't changed. So you do notice that when you come through the top gate and you get into the toil where, you know, so you have, you know, the toil is to the right, the bridge over to, um, to the order is here. Uh, so you do know that this massive bridge is here. Um, well, mm -hmm. somewhat massive. This is the massive bridge. This is a large bridge. Um, so you do know uh, that to, to the right uh, where the where the toil is, you do see people out walking around, which, again, for you guys, you haven't been back in a couple of months and River Break wasn't back up and running when you were last here. So mm, it's good. Right. It's, it's good to see again that you're seeing people walking on the streets and it, it looks more like it's kind of somewhat back to normal. I mean, you can still see the buildings haven't been really repaired. I mean, they're still working on that kind of stuff, like fixing the th fixing things back, back back up and performing maintenance on things. But you do, uh, it does look more normal than it did the last time you were here. It's still weird being here without, you know, geists. Well, it's weird for me to be at the surface and it's very bright and there's lots of people, which I'm going to have to get used to. Yeah, the, the, the brightness gonna... is horrible. Um, actually, uh, Goldie wants to, ask, wants to ask Gucci, how come, okay, being that you're obviously a tracker um, and the work that you do, how are you not scared that she's going to come after you for being an informant? <laughs> or, well, I believe that she should be more afraid of me and what I'm capable of. A lot of people kind of uh, doubt my some of my abilities, which they shouldn't. Because I can be dangerous if you cross me. You're a lover and a fighter. Yes, but I much prefer lover, dear. <laughs> should, should we swing by uh, Kettle Blacksmith's place on the way down? To the crossblades, or sure, whatever's not, necessary. It's not really on the way, but I don't know. So the question is: Will that delay the drinking? So that does. That does yes. delay the drinking. You know. See, I you know knew we should get do. along. I knew we'd get along swimmingly. Ooh. Well, it'd be you know, a little hard to get a ride on the river. Yeah, you know, only slightly delays the drinking is you have to get down off the cliff anyway. Because so. So for Gucci, oh. so for uh, Brianna, who's somewhat new to this, so this cliff that runs along the edge here, this is 200 mm -hmm. feet up. <laughs> so oh. this, this That's right. That's is right. 200 feet up from all of this down here. So you have to find one of the ways to get back down is this switchback here that goes underneath this little waterfall that goes down the 200 feet. The other way mm. is over here in the crush. Uh, right here, there is an elevator which has golems that like winch up the elevator and it's big. It's a massive platform for like wagons and stuff to get on. And these golems winch mm. it up and the golems <laughs> winch it down. Um, so there's only really two ways to get down from this cliff is the switchback and the elevator. And, and the crossblades is right here. The right? crossblades is right here. This big yeah. one right here. This big one right close. here. And where's the blacksmith? So the Kettle Blacksmith, blacksmith is in here. here. Yeah, it's uh, it's up in here. So if you wanted to go, so your your two ways are to go through here and down this way. And you do know this way is a pain in the butt to go through because the citadel is here. So you have to like it's a pain in the butt sometimes to get through 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 the citadel. Um, through here you'd go through you'd go right past Kettle Blacksmiths basically and come over and right. go down the elevator here and then take a dinghy across. A gold lady needs to have that polymorph thing. I didn't prepare it. I'd have to relearn it. Mm. Why? You want me to turn into a bird? You liked that, didn't you? Yeah, that was pretty fun. We got to fly around. I'll relearn I would like stuff. to see that too. This sounds interesting. You I have, have so many plan. surprises. <laughs> I have a few planned. These guys usually like them, but sometimes it depends. But if you're into... Cool and different things. I got a lot in my um, bag of holding, as they say. <laughs> well, let's see what you have. <laughs> now, I do have um, enlarge 
reduced, but I don't think that would make anyone big enough to really do anything, would it? Nope. Nope. Damn. All right. Yeah. Well, well, let's let's take a walk. I guess <laughs> we're taking a walk. The Maybe we'll walk is... by Mrs. Pim's Bakery. They have these little like chocolate things that in the middle is filled with like jelly cream i think it's fig or i think it's pear but it's chocolate on the outside they're really good we might walk by her shop on the way that always, sounds always delightful about snacks snacks constant <laughs> snacking well i mean to be fair i haven't had um delicacies in quite some time they don't nice. have any delicacies in the underdark well they do, but um, again, I have um, particular tastes. As you guys can go over in the toil, you know, you can go go through the toys you're going through. You can see the blacksmith shop, uh, and you guys can walk on in. So for Gucci, who's new to this, uh, new to this particular area at at the at that the moment, Kettle Blacksmith is this massive of man. He is like six. He's not quite as tall as Korbog, but he's pretty close. And he's this <laughs> hugely well. Think of like he's built like a football player, like a mm -hmm. like a like a like a safety or a wide receiver, like just this big tall solid muscle um oh. blonde haired man don't who's, hurt me now uh and he's you guys get there and he's probably out back and he's just swinging the hammer as he's you know he's making something and the hammer is dinging every time he strikes down on it and you know every, he's just glistening with sweat and muscles my my is he shirtless no no he has uh, <laughs> no no he can't be that's dangerous. Gu Gucci may or may not be imagining <laughs> this individual shirtless. Yes. The, to, yeah, yeah. Like to Gucci, it goes slow mo as the arm strikes down, and you know the muscle is flexes and the glisten, and you know his hair, his hair like goes back as he strikes. It's like that. Mu that music is like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Bow, bow. <laughs> We're all looking at Gucci like this. <laughs> Gucci's, got a little, Gucci's got a little bit of drool coming out the side the side, side of his mouth. I'll, I'll give him a little kick. Just a little kick to wake him up. Oh, Gentle, oh, not to hurt sorry. him. <laughs> oh, sorry, dear. Um, I was a bit distracted. You didn't tell me that um, we came for entertainment as well as uh, tools. Seems like you're easily entertained. Yeah, which is a sign of intelligence, of course. But, oh, yeah. yes. <clears throat> and uh, you know how to flatter. <laughs> as as you guys start start talking, he obviously hears you and looks up and he's like, "Oh, friends, you're back." Uh, he you know stops. He puts his th puts things down. Uh, comes over. I, I assume you're back for your weapons. I looks like you made yes. it. <laughs> I did. Barely. Yes, thank you. Well, thanks to you guys, of course. I mean, uh, where's uh, Muvera? You're 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 missing. Uh, Wait. Wait. Repeat, repeat what you just said. Uh, you're missing uh, name? someone. Muvera. No. And he yes. and he kind of and he kind of walks away for a second and comes back out with like a box. And he's like, she wanted this made. And he pulls out a shovel made of the oh. ra made of the rainbow metal. Oh, my heart! Oh, you what? knew the beauty that was Muvera. You knew you Muvera. Guys, you didn't tell me that you knew. Mu you were friends with. You know that goddess. Oh, I don't think she we're was the one about that got away. Or... No, what? she. Oh, no, you're kidding not. me. This oh, I don't know what you're referring to. I call it beauty juice. I I think I still have a vial of it. Do you want to spit it? Oh yes, please. <laughs> now I don't feel quite as good when he calls me handsome. Yeah, <laughs> Norbog is is yeah. It's definitely not a compliment. Listen, I I I met. I had the pleasure of meeting the goddess Muvera. Um, actually, ironically, um, in the Underdark. Um, she left me to take care of things that she had to do and take <laughs> care of. And my heart was broken. She only saw me as a friend. I could not, um, I don't know, I couldn't get her to, to see the love that I had for her. But, you know, 
alas, not everyone can see or understand, you know, my passion. Mm. So it's, it's just one of those sad, unacquainted love stories. If I may, she is buried in my backyard. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't tell me that she died. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goddess! Corbach puts a I'm sorry, I need a moment. Corbach puts a hand on his shoulder and goes, there, there. <laughs> there, there. <laughs> Don't worry, Gucci. We... We, I probably will need to be it. comforted later. And then, like, basically, <laughs> Gucci reaches a hand <laughs> down Quirbog's chest <laughs> after saying, I'll need to be comforted later. Okay, I'm okay. It, it was difficult, but we, we uh, kept we kept uh, Goldie's mother away from her. She wanted to turn her into brisket. Uh, oh. It's a very long story. Excuse me. <laughs> you do it's not really turn that amazing specimen. You just... You just worship the ground that she uh, tra trampled on. Uh, Pooped you know, on. You, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, My mom makes it. Her poop around. smelled like roses to me. I was quite used to it. Goldie, when your brother's Minotaur <laughs> friend died, we ate him for a week. <laughs> she doesn't mean to cook all my friends. <laughs> what are you talking Rem about, Goldie? Remind me to not... Um, <laughs> Cross your mother. Yes. My mother or my brother? Yep. My mother? I, I will. It depends on who is trying to eat the goddess. Be there. She, well, my mom makes a really good eye round. So she tends to really be proud of it. She's won cooking awards in River Break before. So she, that's how she shows love. Mm. Even if it's wrong to cook someone who's just died on your house and the roof, you know. Yes, um, her, her morals are questionable, to say the least. But um, anyway, I'm sorry, before we were, oh, before I, <laughs> I mourned for a second, um, I, I feel like I interrupted um, a, a business transaction. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, Kettle. Yes, that's why, Kettle looks quite shocked by all the, all this information has got, Mavera's dead, somebody tried to eat her, like, Mavera's like, what the hell is happening here? Uh, oh, but first, um, hello, my name is Gucci's Levant, but you may call me Gucci. And, like, mm -hmm. basically puts out a hand to Kettle. Well, uh, hello, Gucci. He, like, tries to, like, mm -hmm. shake your hand or, or, uh... Ooh, strong hands. <laughs> With nails, though. So, do you not want the shovel anymore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kettle, we'll take the shovel. I mean, oh, oh, no, um... If you don't mind, may I keep the shovel? I think she, she was dear to me. She probably wanted him to have it. <laughs> and then basically Gucci takes Goldie's hands. Thank you. And then takes the shovel from Kettle and then kind of like, kind of puts like his face to it. And it's just like, Rub, kind of rubbing his face on the shovel, like remember, seem like he's re remembering something that you you guys are have no clue what's going on right now, and then he puts it away. Is he getting excited. <laughs> it's just, it's just like it's basically like if you hear like careless whispers playing, that's basically like, but like you know, a river break version. That's the remix. That's what <laughs> Gucci is hearing while holding and reminiscing the shovel. Corbog leans over to Bryn and goes, are we awake right now? I, <laughs> like, Corbog, we meet some freaking weird people, man. I, <laughs> I I, thought it was weird in the Underdark. This, this, place. Is, this, this is real. This is the really real I, uh, world, right? It gets, it gets weird every day. I mean, <laughs> can we... Can... Wow. Guilty hoof saint ain't got no rhythm. I... <laughs> Guilty hooves have got no rhythm. Just, just don't do anything inappropriate <laughs> with the shovel, okay? I mean, it was a, she was a good friend of ours. If you could, you know, respect the shovel. I don't um, seem um, very uh, intimate um, with it at the moment. Um, no, no. <laughs> okay. um, you know, I, I, I like other tools. But okay. uh, this one would just be cherished. 
Okay. Um, so, so Kettle, you you did make some daggers as well and uh, some arrows. Art. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I know we're just like. I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking to me. Uh, yes, no. He's he he has uh, he pulls out three daggers and um, he pulls out um, a bundle of like twenty arrows. Oh great! Unfortunately, that I was all. That was, metal? Yes, they're all they're all well. The, I mean, the arrow heads are made out of that metal, but the daggers are all made out of that metal. Um, Sweet. <laughs> I mean, Gucci, we probably ought to split these arrows up. Hmm. It, do you know enough about this orinium? I mean, if the sword, if the sword can do damage specific to drow and, and those from the shadow fell, do you suspect the same thing? Yeah, I want to touch an arrowhead. Do I get that same icky feeling at this point? Yeah. Yep. And it doesn't, it doesn't like burn you. It doesn't, but it, it just, you know, it just, it doesn't, you just get that feeling that it's bad, right? Like even a nick from this thing would do a lot of damage to you. If we want to take care of the enemy and quickly, these will prove very useful. And Goldie, the, the daggers are for you, aren't they? I'd love that. And she like reached forward and takes them both and lifts them up and turns in her hands. And she sticks them like in her sides. Not like in in her sides. <laughs> yes. No, like yes. little holders. <laughs> Those are her holders. <laughs> That's how she holds them. She shoves them into her body. Shut <laughs> Every time. I'm a I hero, mean, god damn it. You never know. She does have healing words, so she might be like into that thing. I don't know. Screw you and your canoe. <laughs> oh, gosh. How do you like me now, Mom? <laughs> So, so Kettle, how are, how are things in the city now? I mean, it's been a couple months since we've been back. Is everything sort of getting back to normal a little bit? Yes. I mean, things are starting to get back to normal. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, uh, people are breaking their tools left and right. So I'm, I've been making, uh, luckily I finished your stuff a month or so ago. I've been making hammers and, and everything for for weeks now. I mean, people are just breaking their weapons or their tools left and right, trying to repair everything. Uh, it's been quite an or it's been quite a good day for quite a, quite, a, quite a good few weeks for me actually. Um, it's it's nice to see the city moving again. And, and we've uh, we've picked up some items. I don't know if there are anything that you're that you're interested in. Uh, just this morning, actually, or last night, we picked up some plate armor. Hmm. Yeah, I could probably uh, do something with that plate armor. I mean, do, do do you want me to modify it for one of you? I mean, uh, I could do that if that's what you're looking for. Well, I'll look at Korbog. It's a little small for me. Yeah. I, I don't definitely not for me. Gucci or Goldie, is it any um, interest? Would it? Uh, I don't think rangers can wear heavy armor, armor right? Rangers, no. I, I don't think have to take heavy armor. It's not armor. like what I'm saying. Like, is this modify where it's like, like that's what I was curious about because I know Goldie's was a magical one, so I was trying to see what the armor was. Yeah, no, it's it not magical. Plating. It's just plate mail. Yeah, okay, I mean, okay. you could probably. I mean, if you took, you know, if you learned how to use heavy armor, you could probably. It probably wouldn't take much modification for you because you're also kind of tall and thin, like a drow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not that much. You know, it's been made for a woman, not for a man. So you'd have to, he could, you know, yeah. he could flatten it out and make it work, work for you. It probably wouldn't take him long, long to do it. I feel like this is stuff we probably would have talked about along the trail. But since Goldie knows the city pretty well, I mean, if there are any magical items we just want to offload, just so we're not carrying a bunch of crap around all the time, where would we do that? 
Yeah, we can talk, and we can do that off off stream. We can do that. We I would can say just sell the that. armor. I think the yeah. armor is better if he if he takes yeah. it for for okay. coin. So we'll deal with all the mundane mechanics, restock, sell yeah. crap, buy stuff. Yeah, we'll we can do all that. that. We can do that via email and not worry about. Um, okay. Because it's just yeah, like you said, just kind of mundane, just blah stuff, you know. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So you guys wrap up with the kettle blacksmith then. Um, well, one um, other question, Kittle. Sure. I mean, we're we're headed to the Crossblades now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, last time we we're here, the the princess was was at the Crossblades. Is, is she moved back? Yes. Oh, yeah. So they're back in the uh, they're back up in the in the um, scepter area. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think last I knew, but I think actually they may be up in the Enlightenment. Actually, up with Quell. In the uh, in the in the school, um, mm -hmm. okay. So up here, yeah, yeah. That would be the enlightenment up here. For those who don't don't know <clears> this area up, up here, and this is where the school of magic is. Is up is is uh, is right is right up here, and that's where you and that is where you guys last saw her. Um, mm -hmm. Was up well. I mean, when she wasn't in the uh, the cross blades, you know. It, and I'm having a complete brain fart. We freed the queen. Where the heck's you been did. the queen? Where's the queen? Uh, she did not appear back with you guys. Oh. She didn't. No. Okay. But you know, she was freed. Um, okay. Okay. Right. But That's something yeah, maybe we can check on. Yeah, I mean, Kettle, have you seen the queen yet? Oh yeah, no, the queen's been back for a couple of days now. Um, oddest thing, I mean, she. I mean, the rumor is she just appeared out of nowhere. Uh, I don't know how much. I mean, with all the magic that flies around this place, I wouldn't be. Su I wouldn't be surprised by that. But yeah, the rumor is she just like two days ago just showed up. Hmm. That's cute. Who knew? We did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of those things. Oh, was that you guys? Did you guys get her? Did you guys free her? Actually, I heard it's a group of amazing adventurers called. The Brisketeers. You Ooh. may have heard of them. Oh, the Brisketeers. Yeah, I think I've... Uh, actually, hang on a minute. Let me... Yeah, I've heard that name, the Brisketeers. I've heard the sayings of some adventuring group named the Brisketeers. Do you know them? Korbog, do we know them? I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Her bike still refuses to go by the name of the the Brisketeers. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I know who you're talking about. I That's us. Uh, filet mignon. And not <laughs> I don't know about this party you speak of. What? You guys are the br are the Brisketeers? Unfortunately, oh. yes. Oh well, bravo! <laughs> you guys did a very good job. I mean, uh, saving the queen. Thank you. So what do we owe you for the customs there, Kettle? I think we, you guys already paid him. Did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while. Ago. That's right. He's we paid honest, you up front. He's honest enough to say, oh, you already paid me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. He seems like a good guy. Yeah, he's a pretty honest guy. He's pretty straightforward. and Okay. Is it head, head your way down? Good to see you, Kettle. So you guys do make your way back through through the toil, um, over here, into the crush. Wine. Do you buy some wine? Well, you're going to be in that oh. area soon here, so you go through the crush. So Gucci, you see. Oh, and so just to point out too, um, the weather here uh, for you, Brianna. The weather here is always perfect. The weather in River Break <laughs> is always perfect. It's always like an 80 degrees and sunny, uh, perfect weather all the time. It doesn't rain except when it needs to rain. And when it does rain, it only rains over here. Um, and you yes. know this because there's an order of druids that takes care of the Dragon Crush wine, and they control the weather over the city. Mm -hmm. And when it needs what, when it need, needs to rain, it does rain, but only over the crops. And so as you're walking through here from the toil, this is called the Crush. And that's where all the wine is made. Like your all these fields here are just dragon crush grapes, just rows and hundreds. So, so just 
just the field of dreams. Yes, is, yes. Is, Hundreds is, of feet is. of just, you know, the trellises and the and the and, you know, and the, uh, the the vines all over the trellises, all down through. You're just walking past. And you hear Gucci. I'm home. It seems like hundreds of feet of grapes, you know, dragon crush grapes. And you do see the occasional druid out there, you know, like tending or put like maybe picking some grapes. Um, you guys make your way all, all the way through, get over here to the corner. And, and it is actually, I think the last time you guys were here, actually, this wasn't functioning, I think. Um, but you're back and you do see the golems are working. Uh, you know, you wait probably about 10, 15 minutes and the golems, you know, bring up the elevator, some wagons come off and maybe go, go about their business. Uh, and, uh, you guys can get on. And you guys, you know, they, they wench the thing down. It takes, it takes a few minutes for it, them to get lower you the 200 feet down the cliff. Um, <laughs> and it is kind of, it's not the most smoothest ride. Cause you know, it, they are like, so it does kind of like move a little bit, stop, move a little bit, stop as they go. Uh, you guys get down to the bottom, though, uh, and you know as you're coming over towards here, uh, Gucci, there's more vines and stuff here. Uh, but right here, you know, there is actually um, a place where you can buy Dragon Crush wine. There's a little winery here. This is like the main wi main winery. Um, and they do sell bottles of Dragon Crush out of the winery. Um, or you can head through over to get to the docks. If you don't mind, um, there's an important stop that must be made. And then Gucci goes and, and goes basically over to where the the wine, like if there's a wine tasting happening or like with the wine, like at the winery area, <laughs> Gucci's going to try to like socialize and try to get the best deal on, on as much as this wine he can get. So you can, you can find it in there and you do see again, the Druids are here, right? So there's, the, there's, there's the Druids, uh, that they run all the stuff. So the Druids are in, are in here, um, and they will sell you, um, Dragon Crush. It's 50, it's 50 gold pieces a bottle. Oh, fantastic. Look here. You can buy as many bottles as you would like. Mm -hmm. 50 gold pieces, you say. <laughs> Let's get, uh, four, four bottles. And he does mention you too. The druid does mention like, it's like this is some of the first uh, new wine that's been produced in River Break in quite some time. With the with the overrun, Ooh. we just got the like the fields have just started producing, which obviously you, you guys say. would know that seems kind of short. But obviously the druids are in you know. Now in addition to those it. four bottles, um, I need and Gucci's gonna like basically motion the person to come closer. Whatever you have, like, in the back, that's your finest of this wine. Like, I mean, the creme de la creme of Dragon Crush. And he, I've missed it. He thinks about it for a second. He's like, uh, I might. he, like, goes back for a second, comes back out. He goes, I could let this bottle go for 150. <laughs> Sold! And it's, you know, and you can see it's it's probably about, it's probably about 40 year, years old. It's a really old bottle of wine. And then Gucci kind of um, basically takes takes uh, the wine in their hands and and takes a look at uh, the bottle and turns it around and it's like, you shall be taste it when we are victorious. And then basically, like puts takes out like like their um, their gold pieces to give to. Um, to the the druid mm -hmm. while putting away like the bottles. So it was four bottles of regular. Yep. And then one of the very special one. So 350 gold. Yep. Yeah. What's up, boozer? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what what did I say at the beginning of the introduction for Gucci? I I thought I love I this dragon crush wine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you said three fifty. Yep. All righty. Gucci, you know we drink for free across the across the river here, right? I, well, um, but this is for the road. This is <laughs> for you know. I mean, if we, what if we're traveling? I mean, I know that as you know what I do. I'm in forests and underdark and and the mountains and you know if you are parched. I would like to, the choice to just 
enjoy myself then and there. Why wait to try to find a tavern when you can enjoy the pleasures of life wherever you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah life, life pleasures, those are great. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm pretty sure Katie would give us some free bottles too, but yeah, you know, it, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> this is a good investment. And then, you know, we're giving back to the druids right. for doing the Lord's work, and then basically putting the, mm -hmm. just putting the bottles in the. Right, and as you're walking your way over here, and you get over towards the uh, towards the docks area, um, and mm -hmm. again, like uh, you know, so there are like the docks are there, and there's all sorts of dinghies like lined up at the docks, and they see you guys start coming, and a couple people kind of perk up, like, oh, oh, hey, we got some people that might want to pay to go across the water. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of guys like, and, and at about that point, this very familiar looking like 70 something year old man comes walking from the one end of the dock. And as he walks by, he like takes the hands and pulls them down as he walks by the people. My friends, how are you? I be dingy Pete. How are you? It's been a long time since I've seen you. It's good to see you back among the living, Diggy Pete. No. Yeah, you, you don't remember Diggy Pete? <laughs> At least you remember Diggy Pete. Diggy Pete was fun, right? Were you, still, were you on game then? No. Oh. No? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> you were like, you have it's to been remember that long Diggy ago. Pete. <laughs> Gold, Goldie and Gucci, this is Diggy Pete. He's a, he's a good buddy oh, of ours. We met no, him when we first in the city. You just live on. Well, hello there, young one. I be I be the best dinghy pilot in this city. If you're gonna oh, go I with someone, you should go with Dinghy Pete. <laughs> I don't doubt it one bit. I've heard great things. I think. I got more years of experience than all these whippersnappers over here pushing their dinghies around. Ding Dingy Pete, you should <laughs> you should definitely go to the Lumo Estate. They a hundred percent tell tell them that we sent you. And that Which, you should be their personal taxi. What was that last name again? The Lumos. L U yeah. Lumo. Lumo. Who's a Lumo? Goldie. Goldie's a Lumo. Basically, like, know. like, like think... basically, Gucci looks over at Goldie for a second, and then yeah. thinks. Hmm. And you know, Gucci, that 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 makes sense to you, right? Gu uh, oh no, no, it does. I'm I'm yep. just oh, yeah, basically I like you know. as Gucci finding out for the first mm -hmm. time because. Gucci didn't know right, right. Goldie's last name. Yeah. But for those people <laughs> watching who don't know Riverbreak that much yet, so the 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 birthright is this area, and the birthright is where a, the the sorcerer lines live on these islands in within the bay, and they're all um, racially based, most of them, and there is one race race of. Uh, halflings uh the lumos who has a who have a sorcerer line which goldie happens to be part of that sorcerer line they're all redheads you notice them from a mile away <laughs> little redheaded people running around well, maybe not a mile La you know, last time we saw goldie's mom she said she was looking for a for a water taxi to put on her tainer at, at five gold pieces a week so you should definitely go talk to her all right i'll certainly be checking that out then right goldie yeah <laughs> Goldie's like, what the hell? <laughs> come on, my come on, my friends. I'll take you across to the hollow. I assume that's where you're trying to go, yeah? This oh, yeah. Be interesting. So he takes you over, he gets you in the dinghy. Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh it is a silver piece of piece there, friends. Oh, a silver piece of piece? I'll I'll throw him a gold piece. Ah, beautiful. Thank you. And he <laughs> takes you across now. So, so Gucci is your new to so. So he's he's quite slow, <laughs> <laughs> but he is he is this skinny little guy. You know, he's like seventy years old. I mean, he's in pretty good shape for a seventy year old year old guy. But he's a seventy year old year old guy. So he's so. like that sloth from Zootopia. With <laughs> <laughs> but okay, you know, he gets you across. Uh, he gets across safely. Uh, all right, here you go, friends. Thank you, and I'll uh, I'll check into that job with the with like the Lumos there, friend. Thank you. 
Yeah, yes. just make sure you mention to her that it's the brisketeers and that she still owes us some brisket. All right. So until then, you're on retainer. All right. I will let her know. Gucci Goldie, lazy. your brother would never hire a dinghy Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Goldie, Gucci. your brother never sends a dinghy Pete to your parents' house <laughs> looking for brisket. Mom! Gucci I swear never grin. Grin. Killian's a piece uh, of shit. Never mind. Are you I'll sure play you want later, to stick Gucci. with that name? Are you sure? Oh. Stick with what name? The Brisketeers. Who? We didn't name ourselves. Who no, named us? No. Um, Some random voice in our head that was on an online chat at one point. Or by the It's like, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah, well. It's, yes. You know. That's exactly it. <laughs> the name will come to us. Right, Corbag? It doesn't even make any god's damn sense. But I, I reckon had, we haven't even had brisket. I recommend a, a higher quality meat. That's that's very low grade. Uh, higher higher grade for it, obviously. I'm rib. Oh, no. can, we, can we not name ourselves after something we'd like to eat? <laughs> Gold that your brother's friends never put on your mother's brisket. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> my mom's a pretty powerful sorceress. She might have something to say if we change the name. Did she name us? Maybe she did when we left the house. I think Muvera had something to do with it. Oh, the oh. goddess. <laughs> we should go leave flowers at her grave in my parents' yard when we're home. We must. That will be one of the many things to do. So right now you guys are in the hollow. Where's your first destination going from the hollow? Straight to the crossblades. Mm -hmm. Straight to the crossblades, yeah. okay. You can go back to big head mode if you want. That. Okay. <laughs> Better for role playing purposes. All right, so you guys make it back to the crossblades. Uh, very busy in here. Uh, I, I, you know, again, you're seeing, you know, more people walking as you're walking through the hollow. Um, and, and Gucci, the hollow is like the, uh, like the economic center of the city. Uh, it's mm -hmm. where, like, most things are made in the toil, but not a lot of stuff gets sold in the toil. Most mm -hmm. things are made in the toil, transported to the hollow, where all the markets are and that sort of thing. And they get sold here, like open-air markets and that sort of thing. So it's very densely populated in here, lots of activity and things happening. Which, again, it is. Now that now that the guys have been freed from, from the city and the city is getting back to normal, you're seeing that bustle and hustle going on down here in the hollow is make your way because you're on the you're on the west side of the hollow you make it all the way to the east side of the hollow um, and you make it to the cross blades which does in fact look like it's been repaired uh it looks the building from the outside looks very nice and back to what what you imagine it probably looked like once when it was young a young and town I, tavern enter in a way that attracts a lot of attention <laughs> in our typical <laughs> yeah yeah. I love your confidence. It's so attractive. Again, we still like have it. to get to know each other a little better. All right. And as you enter, obviously making the grand entrance as you do, like a lot of people like kind of stop and look at you, kind of go back about their business. But there are a few, a few people. Um, Actually, one of them be Katie, Kate, Katie O'Halloran, who comes like around the corner at one point where she got drinks in her hand. And she's like, and she looks very excited. She kind of like puts the drinks down on the table, like random table. They don't, you're not even sure they were the right table. And she like heads over to you. She's like, oh, you're my friends. You are back. We're back. Missing somebody and picked up another new one. But, uh, but the three oh, of you. Oh, darling. Yeah. I'm, I'm Gucious Levant. Oh, what nice to meet you. <laughs> do you guys have something to do with the queen coming back? Yeah, yeah. Where's the beer? A little something. Oh, well. Was... A very little red-haired she... something. She like, reaches over like the guy at the table was about to like pick up the beer that she was carrying, and she like, grabs it out of his hand and like hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Kind of looks back at him and she's like, those aren't for you. <laughs> Oh, Katie here a table. She goes over and kind of like quickly cleans off a table and sits you guys down. And our, our new friend Gucci. 
is is very much into into food and good beverage. If we could show her a good time this evening, that would be great. Yes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, you, the three of you want the usuals? Should I? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Bring us a pitcher and then whatever they need. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that would mean your best of the Dragon Crush. Yes. Oh, I, I think I have a. I think I might have a couple of good bottles left still. Let me let me see what I got. Yeah. Let me let me, let me go check. The Dragon Crush just started flowing again. They just started making. Did you know that they just started yes, making them again? Yes. Yes. I just purchased some bottles and. And a special little treat that, um, you know, uh, if you do a little talking and schmoozing, you're able to find out about uh, the secret bottles. Whoa. And I was able to get a hold of one of those. So oh, excellent. I'm, today has been actually quite amazing. I'm, I'm so <laughs> happy. So she'll uh, she'll take off and she'll come back. She'll start coming back and the food starts coming. The drink starts coming. Uh, the best she has is she has like a like a five year old bottle of Dragon Wine or you know, Dragon Crush or something. Ooh. So it's it's not it's not the oldest bottle, but it's it was definitely before. Uh, oh, actually, no, more than five. How would uh, it was like fit like fifteen? Because that's when yeah. they were quite some time they were so it was like just she brings your bottle like just before um, the whole city got taken over and everything. So um, fantastic. We're going to be cracking it open. <laughs> what? Kraken? You want to, you want to fight it? You want to fight a Kraken? That was, uh, that was already, we already did that. Sorry. <laughs> we already did that. Yeah. yeah. We've already been there. So, uh, yeah. So the food and drink flows quite well throughout the whole thing. Uh, uh, you guys need rooms? You want yeah. your usual rooms? I think I, uh, I think I might have a couple of rooms if you, if you need some place to stay. Yeah. And I'm totally open with sharing a room. And then she yeah, like think... then he he looks directly at Korbog again and <laughs> uh, I, I mean Korbog and I usually share rooms, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean I you can sleep on the floor. I know Bryn, are you the gonna tr- are you gonna tr- are you, are you gonna trust poor Goldie sleeping by herself with this uh tiefling you just, you just met? Uh <sighs> It's okay because she kind of she kind of likes like she sort of likes Gucci, so she's like just thinks he's really fabulous. So she's like, okay, cool. <laughs> she wants to like braid his hair and all that. Oh yes, um, I haven't had my hair braided in quite some time. My my sister's. Um, anyway, I'm back to the wine. Yes. 